go. This mechanism is the chain drive. The chain drive is one of my favorites. Let's do an overview and look at all of the parts of the chain drive. Here we have two sprockets, a chain, two axles, and our handle crank, hand crank, for powering or moving the mechanism. You'll notice that the movement transfers the movement from the drive sprocket using the chain to the output sprocket with a driven. Now, the sprocket with the hand crank here is your drive. Let's talk about the relationship of the input axle to the output. Notice they are parallel to each other. Parallel to each other. The type of movement is rotary in both the input and output. This is gear train setup A. For gear train A, you'll notice I have the hand crank on the small sprocket. It is transferring power to the large sprocket. So as it's transferring that, you'll notice small to large has a decreased speed. The speed in this is decreased. But the power, because the output is large, is increased. So your torque is increased because of the large output sprocket. Now let's talk about the gear ratio. This has six teeth, this has 30 teeth. To transfer from six to 30, I'm gonna have to rotate this, here's my mark right here at the top, one, two, three, four, five turns to make that go one turn. So my ratio is five to one. Now, we're gonna change this mechanism to gear train B. And we're going to move the handle here, and I'm going to make the large one now turn the small one. We now have a completely different mechanism, a chain drive mechanism. So we'll call this one B. For chain drive gear train B, watch the movement. Look how fast that moves. So by moving the input to a large and the output to small, we have increased the speed. We have, however, in this gear train B, decreased our torque because the output is small. Increase the speed because it's small. Increase the torque because it's small. Let's talk about this gear ratio. For one turn of this input, this one will turn five times. I have now changed my gear ratio one to five. Now let's talk about the direction of travel between the input and output. Notice this is moving, and I'm, how I'm turning the crank, this is moving in a clockwise motion. The output is also moving in a clockwise motion. In other mechanisms, we had different types of movement, but here the chain transfers the same movement. They both move in a clockwise motion. Now, our flow of power is also reversible. I can turn the crank the other direction. Okay. One more additional note about the chain drive is that the chain drive using a chain is expensive. It will transfer power over a longer distance. It'll also transfer speed over longer distance. So transferring 
torque and speed over a longer distance. It will be more expensive and it will be louder.